top 10 greatest live musical performances. This has been requested for a little while now by Strato Z. Um, and I did want to do it, but the main problem why I didn't do it was mainly because he didn't ask it really properly. What I mean with that is that he just said, you know, top 10 live performances, he just said it straight out right like, like that. And I don't really think that's, you know, proper to just say it like that, you know, like I'm sort of an answering machine or something like that. Um, it's kind of an artistic way to ignore your fans, but that is kind of the reason why I... Um, I don't want to say ignore, but that is kind of what I did, because you just ask it, or you didn't even ask it, you just said it and that's it. So next time if you're gonna request something, just, you know, ask it, you know, say, uh, can you do this and then I will do it. Because it's way more proper to do instead of just throwing it out there and expecting I'm gonna do it. It's really an artistic way, but, or really, an, for me, an artistic way to really look at it, but that's how it is. So uh, next time you're requesting something, just ask it. I know that's really dumb of me, but that's just how, how I go. Um, so this is probably gonna be really similar to the electrifying live bands of all time. I believe I did that like a week ago, or it's supposed to come out, I don't know. <laughs> But it probably did already a while ago, I can't remember. Uh, that one got 5.2 million views, this one got 5.6 million views, so that is a little bit more. But it also had, you know, two, two years more of uh, growing. So there we go. Uh, the thumbnail is Queen, yeah, Queen is of course probably gonna be n number one. I believe there were number one on the, on the Electrify live band. And I can't, I can't really... I think the difference between those videos is that electrifying live bands means that they're always great bands live and performances mean the most legendary performances and Queen again is going to be number one on this list because uh, Wembley Stadium or no, no 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 Live Aid, Live Aid was incredible man I believe a crowd of 60,000 people that were all chanting along with Freddy that is just insane um, yeah, it's probably gonna be very similar to the Electrifying live band, so I'm just gonna guess it's that list again, rehashed. Or that list was rehashed since. That was a newer list, so there we go. Oh, this fucking commercial again. I didn't see this commercial for like a fucking year, and now it's back again. Amazing. But they're all shit, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, requested by Strato Z. I believe he had a different name, but he changed it again. You know, the one with the blue TV. Nobody cares, but. Uh, you too. Nothing like experiencing music in concert. I'll probably put them at number 8 or something. Number one right there. The people are also requesting uh, the Bohemian Rhapsody trailer. And I've seen it, but I already uh, commented with... It's not really a worthy reaction since it's only a one minute video. So I don't really think it's, you know, worthy of that. And I'm probably gonna get copyrighted and I think about it, really. Probably. Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, that Woodstock performance, man, amazing. Fucking well. Yeah, Jimmy should be top three, I would say. Main performance. Performer. Bruce Springsteen. What a way to start it off, man. I just love it how long Strategy requested this one. And it's just pure shit from the get-go. Probably gonna get better though, but... Styles, the I don't know what a fucking way to start it off. I want to skip this, but... I don't know. Moves 
I just think it's so cringy when he is doing the same dance moves over and over again with some kind of stranger from the crowd. I just think that's really cringy. All this and even had some audience members showing some love to Bruce's homeland. Those delays are horrible. Don't ever do that. Um, Metallica. Number nine, Metallica with the San Francisco. Sun. Yeah, the thing, the thing is, this is of course way better than uh, Bruce Shitstein and Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> um, it's of course way better. Metallica fucking destroys Bruce Springsteen in my opinion. But the thing is that I didn't really care for S and M, and that sounds really lo wrong, but it means. Uh, symphony Orchestra with Metallica and Metallica But the thing is that I just don't I just don't enjoy this really. It's alright. I think it's alright. It's a really s Smart or smart. It's kind of a creative idea by Metallica, but it just kind of feels in re uh, You know in reality in execution it's a nice idea, and Metallica's fucking wealthy as fuck, so they can do it, of course, but... I just didn't really care for it. You know, Metallica's music, at least in back in the day, was fast, ferocious, fucking ballsy, brutal music. And having an orchestra over that just kind of kills that, you know... That's brutal vibe that you're going with. It's kind of losing it there. You're kind of losing your ball for some majestic, majestic. Fucking hell, how do you say that? You know, you're getting more majestic, but you're losing a lot of balls in the process. You really do. I do think that it's nicer for them to go the instrumental route with Call of Cthulhu and Orion to live to die and Anesthesia pulling teeth, the four classic um, the four classic instrumentals of the four, first four Metallica albums. I think it's nice to hear an instrumental with an orchestra because it works. It's an int instrumental piece. And that's kind of you know it's kind of classical, I think. So it kind of works with that. It works with the instrumentals. But it's not working for you know the the vocal track, which is like ninety percent of their of their songs. The memory remains is from Reload, I believe. So they're not really making new songs. Uh, Daft Punk. Yeah, but I mean, I think this is kind of a controversial pick since, uh, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy me some Daft Punk, those first two albums are incredible. Um, I like, how's the fourth one called again? Or the third one, I forgot. Uh, but with that weird ass robot in the music video, I forgot the name. Uh, Human After All, I believe, I don't know. And then um, Random Access Memories is great, arguably the greatest record. Rock Do's favorite record actually, because it's kind of jazzy and kind of, you know, it's the most rocking album out of them all. My favorite is of course Discovery, which is no, it's not an unpopular pick. But, I mean, to, to put an EDM act on here is kind of F for me since they're mostly just playing, you know, pushing a play button and that is all they do. I'm not saying Daft Punk does, but it might be possible to do that. It really is. And they probably do that as well, not all of the time, but sometimes. I wouldn't put, put them on the list, but maybe an honorable mention, I guess. It just sounds exactly like, you know, the studio takes, which is, you know, you want to go 
um, to the concert for that because you know you're used to the studio tracks but I'm going to a live concert I'm, <laughs> I've never been there but um, but if I go to a live concert then I want to have a more faster or kind of a different experience because if you're going to get the same exact experience on uh, you know on the studio record as uh, live as well then it's kind of you know a waste of money to go really Copy waste of time waste of energy Because this is just, they just basically sample the studio tracks and they just kind of remix it a little bit. I, I wouldn't put them on the list, but I mean, they're still alright, I guess. Fucking love writing, man. And I'm glad that they chose this version over MTV Unplugged. I love both versions. But Unplugged is kind of a more, you know, I believe they already got it on the Unplugged top 10 or something like that. But Reading version is fucking flawless. One of the best live concerts I've ever seen in my life. So the band's acoustic MTV Unplugged in New York performance was also well received. Yeah, but you already have another list for that, so fuck off. But fucking Reading is where it's at, man. Fuck me, I They're both really unforgettable. After being wheelchaired onto the stage by a music journalist, Kurt Cobain led his bandmates in a rousing and energetic performance. People who actually bought it are fucking retarded. <laughs> uh, you just got all of the humor by uh, Kurt Cobain, fucking hell. Nirvana tore the place apart, and the Reading Pretty much a flawless uh, concert right there. The Sex Pistols at the Lesser Free Trade Hall. Punk rock as we know it may there never we go. have existed if the Sex Pistols had to play Lesser Free Trade Hall in 1976. Everything about the Sex Pistols impressed at that first gig we went to in Highway. Though less than 40 people were in attendance, the show was pivotal. Those 40 were fucking lucky. I believe really the birth of punk, uh, punk rock. kind of a shame that uh, Who's Next wasn't out yet because seeing that live is just the best, it really is. Tommy is a close second though. Just listen to the record uh, yesterday actually. Still does hold up. It holds up. I just love the delay of my generation. It's just kind of accurate now, really. Water. <coughs> yeah, I believe they just played Tommy in, in its entirety on that set, really. I believe so. Blue is amazing, man. Great band. I know, I know that Chloe Johnson doesn't like them, but I mean, they're just a great band, they really are. Can't deny the greatness. The thing is, I prefer, um, you know, I, uh, I prefer the Beatles, of course, over the Who. Uh, but the thing is that I prefer Who's live version, because Who's a better live band. And they have one of the greatest live records ever, uh, Live at Leeds or something. Oh, something a little masterpiece called, you know, the greatest live album ever. I don't, I don't know. But uh, the thing is here, 
I like this live performance, I like the songs, but this was in the, you know, the pre-Rubber Soul days of the band. Which or not, I, I do like it, I've listened to it actually this week. But overall, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm a fan. Well, I, I'm a fan, but I just prefer the Rubber Soul days way more. And the thing, the biggest issue I have with this live performance here, that you cannot hear shit. You can't hear shit in this live performance since all of the girls are just screaming all of the time and twist and shout and yesterday and all of those classic tracks are being played. I mean, it's just insane, man. It's legendary, but it's not the greatest live musical performance ever since you can't hear shit. I would, I would put Ed Sullivan show on this, uh, on this list, really. The Beatles! <laughs> that introduction, amazing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, The Beatles! No. I mean, fans are fucking crazy, man. <laughs> this one bitch getting thrown out of the stage. I mean, it was for the best that they stopped performing live because it just got insane. If they would probably tour uh, Sgt. Peppers or Abbey Road, then fans would probably just fucking kill them, really. <laughs> Bitches in a cage, man. Babies in black. Just everybody just behind the cage, just grabbing, you know, the fucking cage, trying to get to them. It's insane. Uh, Led Zeppelin. I want to say Madison Square, but that isn't right. Led Zeppelin at the Royal Albert Hall. Oh, there we go. Also where uh, Opet played, I believe. And I believe Stephen Wilson is gonna perform there, or already did, I don't know. But of course, Led Zeppelin did like uh, half a century before them, so... It's insane, man. Uh, I know that not everybody likes, you know, when Jimmy Page was the harp thing, and... I'm not the biggest fan of Jimmy, uh, or of uh, Robert Plant, just, you know, kind of... Uh, milking out is well not per se milking out but just kind of stretching out it's kind of does that um, you know just repetitive nature what he did just then I'm not the biggest fan of that because it just kind of sounds retarded to me but I do like the harp thing though I think that harp thing is amazing kind of extended half hour version of Days and Confused that's pretty insane I mean, all of the songs were like 10 minutes long on that, uh, on Royal Albert Hall. It just got really progressive there in the 70s, really. Jimmy Anders, of course. Number two. Number two. Jimmy there we go. Yeah, I said top three, man. This guy just... He, he can be number one for all I care, man. Fucking hell. Insane artist. I mean, it doesn't matter, really. But there were almost no people there. Lucky sons of bitches. He also ingrained himself into our memories with his feedback and distortion heavy version of the American national anthem in the process. Incredible, man. It was, all, it was also one of Kirk Hammond's first uh, influences, he said. I mean, that's one hell of an influence, though. The debut album, man, incredible. I mean, all of his records are just fucking great. Pink Floyd. 
Uh, li yeah, live it was alright. Oh yeah, speaking of live age, you know what's number one. I forgot it already, but you know. Uh, Journey Cash at Falls in Prison. It's kind of insane that he can just sit there and just, you know, can play his music because if he isn't locked behind a case or something, then he could get murdered, I guess. At least nowadays, but he's already dead. <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean that, you know, in a harmful way, but of course, rest in peace, Johnny Cash. Uh, but that, that came over really insensitive, sorry for that. Uh, James Brown at the Apollo. I mean, he's alright, I'm not a fan per se. Uh, Sonosphere Festival by Slipknot, I mean, really. I mean, they're not bad, but compared to all the other acts, they're just kind of... No. Just no. Uh, Live at Dormant by U2. Uh, I, expe I expected them to be on the list, but I think it's more proper to put them on the honorable mentions. Great band, don't get me wrong, but I think they're just other acts that are, you know, better live. But in the number one, no surprise. The turn now. Their most pointless and most overrated song, but they just made it great with the addition of Live Aid. They really did. Though their 1986 gig at Wembley Stadium was memorable too. I mean Queen Live man, greatest live band ever. I mean can you think of one band that you know begin in the 70s and two decades two decades later they in my opinion hit their peak with innuendo the greatest record they ever did in my opinion and you know go out like that i mean there are barely any bands that can do that i don't know Fucking hell, man. No. Yeah, Nirvana, Beatles. That's alright. It's kind of the obvious picks right there. I don't agree with Daft Punk though. I, I think, you know, it's kind of too easy for them to put them on the list. Since they don't really have an instrument and they don't really play anything, they just push a play button. Uh, Michael Jackson's live concert in Butcheress was watched all over the world too. I'm totally fine with Queen being first because their live aid performance was iconic as hell. Michael should have been on the list. Um, yeah, I think you can put him on the list, I guess. Yeah, replace him with Bruce Springsteen, that is fair, I guess. Uh, Freddie Mercury, uh, Love Emoji, Queen Love Emoji, I guess. Yeah, of course, number one for sure. I only came here because, you know, yeah, Queen comment. Flair or Mercury, what a great name. As far as I'm concerned, Queen, yeah, you know, if I just see Queen, I, I'm just like, yeah, it's it's number one. In my opinion, Freddie Mercury's a legend, yeah, he is. Freddie Mercury's a rock, but I mean, just everybody's pra praising Queen. Monsters of Rock, Nights in 91. Michael Jackson, what about Michael? Yeah, probably 50% of the comments is where's Michael Jackson and the other 50 are like, yeah, Queen is number one. MJ, yeah, MJ, 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 just <laughs> all of these comments are MJ. MJ, MJ, MJ. <laughs> it's kind of wild here, MJ. You two, the most overrated band of the last 100 years. Yeah, they are overrated though, but they have some great songs in their discography. And Queen, okay. Uh, I wouldn't say that, but uh, yeah, just people you know calling things O or the, the O word. 
Uh, which is, you know, he can do that, but I wouldn't stoop to that level. Uh, Death Punk. Death Legends. Uh, Pink, Pink Floyd Pulse concert was the best musical performance ever in music history. Yeah, I think that a lot of people sleep on Pulse. I think it's a great live record, but a lot of people just kind of dismiss it since it was the David Gilmour era of the band and a lot of people weren't a fan of that since it was too poppy and not, you know, it wasn't proc anymore really. Not proper proc. <laughs> I always want to say that fucking hell. But uh, Strategy, thank you for requesting this video. I saw it already for like a fucking month already, but you know what you have to do next time? Just uh, say it a bit more properly and I will do it next time. I hope you've enjoyed this album review. Or album review. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you want to see in the upcoming video. I hope you've enjoyed this one. And I will see you guys in the next video. God bless you, safe, take care. Uh, let me know what you want to see in the upcoming video. If you haven't already requested something. And yeah, until the next time. Peace.